Hello everyone, Average Joe coming to you from the mountains of North Carolina and today I'm going to be going over a little bit of a winter helper. Um, it's a hammock sock. I'm using the One Wind brand one. Uh, it's a little nice little budget one. I'll put the link below. It's a nice cost efficient, cost effective one to use for your first time out on the trail. I don't have it in the bag because I actually have it in a Black Bishop bag I made. So this has my hammock my sock already surrounded the uh, hammock and of course the sock so uh, we're just going to hang this up real quick and I'll go over some of the details about it this is actually one of the reasons I love using a black bishop bag so I've got my hole I've st uh, sewn into the end of it and you just uncinch it grab a hammock and just walk it out all right, so here is the sock Come all wrapped around the hammock itself. Well, you have one end that's wide open that you can cinch down with this cord. So you can slide it over your hammock if you want to get in and out. You just cinch it down tight. That protects that end. And then down here at this end, you have a little bit of a cinch on it. But it's not as wide of an opening, mainly just enough to get a little bit of breather to get your suspension in there. So, and underneath it, which I did not know till I got it, you have an opening so you can actually get in your hammock pretty easily. And it's got a cinch cord at both ends, so once you get in there, you can cinch your butt tight. Um, I weigh a little bit, so a bit of my under quilt does hang out. Uh, I'm going to try to get it in there and see how close I can get this thing cinched up. And you have your two breather holes to help prevent condensation. It's 20 degrees out here right now. I'm really looking forward to seeing how warm I can get in here, well, even with these two. But if it's a really windy day, if you just pitch your tarp really low and tight, that'll help block the wind from coming through here. But for the sake of the video and not blocking this beautiful gym, I will not be using a tarp. So let's go check out the inside. Okay, so we're going to pull it back up. Get a little opening. Pull our hammock back. And we're going to pull it over ourselves. All right. Okay, so we've got them cinched as tight as I'm going to attempt. As you can see, we've got pretty good coverage. We have a little bit of an opening, but with my underquilt, which this is a 20 degree underquilt with 2 ounces of over stuff from the, uh, hammock gear. And if I need to, I'll put a sit pad underneath my butt so I use a Dutchware's little egg, um, egg carton one and as you can tell it does block the wind pretty well I'm, I'm in the mountains and it's kind of windy today and I'm not catching much of a breeze and it's starting to get warm in here but you notice it's kind of on you I mean I'm, I can get claustrophobic as most people can and you do have these two openings here at the top. So you're laying in here and you feel this get on top of you. I made pretty much a spreader bar out of using my hiking pole. And some cord. So I've got little uh, slip knots at the end of it. And up here I have an S hook. It's actually got tied on with a lark's head knot so that way it doesn't keep the line from it doesn't keep the hook from sliding forward or backward. It creates a little bit of space in here for those of you like me that are claustrophobic. And if you need to extend it, just undo your lock and slide it out. Now if you do apply too much pressure, I do advise putting a sock or a glove or something over this carbide tip so you don't tear the material other than that 
it's pretty warm in here. I'm overall so satisfied with it. It doesn't weigh much. Um, I'll put the weight up here in the, on the screen. And I mean, it's a nice little addition to have when you're doing deep winter camping. My friend Sam has used this uh, particular model when we did our deep winter camping trip. And I was jealous because, I mean, the Dutchware does have a built-in one uh, top cover I can zipper in. But this also helps keep the wind off of your under quilt. Help keeping a little more heat in here. So, honestly, it's 20 degrees out here right now. And I'm actually pretty cozy. I could take my jacket off and take a nap. But, all in all, I give it a good rating. 4.5 out of 5 stars. So, great job. And, uh, thank you for watching. Okay, as in an addendum to the video we're gonna I'm gonna show you how I did that line for my hiking pole just start off with a piece of cord the best thing I can do to tell you is to get in a hammock in your uh, in your house or in your yard and you're gonna initially just kind of dry hang it um, so you can see how long of a length you need so you start off with what I call I don't know the proper name for this. I call it a bite loop. Um, but you loop the line on the inside of itself. Creating a uh, slip knot type. Just bring it over one end. And then hang this line over your ridge line. And then tie it to this end. So then you can kind of see how far of a gap you need. For that little bite knot that's on the other end, I untied this one so I could show it to you. It's really simple. We're going to do it really big at first just so you can see how it's done. But you just grab two ends, pull it in on itself, and pull it through. And there you go. I love simple, easy knots. I'm horrible about tying stuff to trees, so the simpler the better. So to create that little slip knot, you just run the line from this end through it. And then you can attach it to the other end. And then you've got a perfectly balanced line. As far as once you have found that happy spot on your line where you're going to balance it, use a D clip you can use an S beaner whatever you want to use just hook it onto the ridge line and for my lark's head knot which I've done in another video it's one of my favorite quick little simple knots and I use this for my shepherd's hooks when I tie everything out but you just bring your fingers in loop them around each other touch them together bring them together like a butterfly's wing just run your clip through those two lines Just pull tightly, and you've got yourself a lark's head knot. And for the prussic knot, this is a neat little booger. Uh, I use it on my hammock so I can slide it up and down. As if you've noticed that before in a couple of older videos, I have a double-ended stuff sack that I have that slides up and down, and that's where I throw my phone and my water in at night so I can just reach up and grab it. But it's the same kind of like bite knot you saw with this. It's the exact same thing. I just use a piece of shock cord to get a little bit of attention to it. So, take your piece of shock cord. It's the same thing. Just run it around itself. This is a thicker one. I usually use a lighter one, but this is what I just happen to have on my desk at the time of this video. Um, you just take a pair of scissors, snip off the end, do your customized little burn just to keep the phrase from slipping in. And there you've got this, which you're ready to make a prussic knot. And let me throw up a hammock real quick and we'll go over the prussic knot. So take your shot cord. And do is you're just going to wrap it around itself. Just 
try to keep these loops lined up so they don't overlap each other. Alright, and then take this piece and run it through that hole. Just pull down. You've created a pressing knot. So let's get a good little tight grip. Get a little bit of a pull to it. You can see where you can actually take it and slide it up and down your ridge line. It's a nice little stopper. So I saw hypothetically, I've got my double ended stuff sack. Now I got a water bottle in it or something, and it adds weight. It pulls it down. And it hits this stopper so it doesn't slide forward and hit me in the head. So, other than that, thank you for watching. You have a good day. If you got any questions, comments, things you'd like to hear about, post it below. Thank you.